the world's most honored watch is Longines. Longines watches have won 10 World's Fair grand prizes, 28 gold medals, and more honors for accuracy than any other timepiece. Longines, the world's most honored watch, is made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnall Watch Company. It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the vital issues of the hour, a presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, a distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Taking the place of Mr. Henry Hazlitt, who's on a mission to Europe, is Mr. Donald I. Rogers, financial editor of the New York Herald Tribune, and Mr. William Bradford Huey, editor of the American Mercury. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Theodore R. McKeldin, Governor of Maryland. In this spontaneous and unrehearsed discussion, the opinions are necessarily those of the speakers. Governor, it's a great pleasure for me to be on the show with you tonight since I'm one of your constituents from Montgomery County. And I believe you're a Republican governor, aren't you? I am. Thank you very much, Mr. Huey. I'm delighted to be here. And uh, you're also an Irishman, I believe, and an Episcopalian. Well, my grandfather came from Belfast, but I'm a Scot. And you used the uh, Republican pronunciation of Theodore Roosevelt, I That's believe. That's right. It's Theodore Roosevelt, not Roosevelt. Franklin pronounced it Roosevelt. Teddy pronounced it Roosevelt. Governor, I'm interested in your budget. I understand that you have succeeded in cutting back the budget in Maryland. Yes, we uh, eliminated some $7 million in, uh, in taxes, and yet we balanced the budget this year. I think we're the only legislature outside of Utah that had a session without increasing the taxes one cent. How could you do that when only one other governor was able to do it? We did it with the strictest economy and by uh, resisting all pressure groups. Uh, Governor, let's, uh, most states know that Maryland also has a large source of income and uh, racetrack revenue. Uh, that's also, you do have that advantage, don't you? Yes, and uh, we welcome that revenue. And uh, you favor that source of revenue. I, I do. I believe you've even increased it some since you've been governor there. The last session of the legislature we did. And you also now have... Uh, night racing, harness racing in Maryland. That's right, trotting go. racing. Trotting racing. Very well attended. And uh, also a source of revenue. Excellent source. Now, are you in favor of uh, additional, uh, I believe Maryland also has a, uh, a county system for <coughs> slot machines, a uh, local option system, haven't you? That's right, about three or four counties have that slot machines. Do you, does the state get any revenue from the slot machines? That goes to the uh, counties. Do you favor an extension of gambling in Maryland, uh, say uh, horse rooms uh, where men can, can bet on it, uh, bet on races and not be at the track? No, I'm absolutely opposed to that. Governor, I uh, would like to turn a minute to the federal picture. Uh, I noticed in uh, magazine Steel that the uh, tax next year will probably approach 30% of individual income, uh, which is considered a very dangerous point. Uh, I was wondering what your thoughts are on that matter. Well, I believe that the federal government's expenditures are getting entirely out of bounds. I think we have got to resort to some kind of economy to uh, reduce that or to eliminate that or certainly to hold the line on it. Well, uh, what kind of economies? Where would you cut? Well, there are a lot of places I think you could cut. If you read some of the statements of Senator Harry Byrd, you'd see where he said you could eliminate 500,000 employees and save $2 billion. And if Harry Byrd said it, nobody's challenged it. I think it can be done. Well, I have noticed that uh, since, uh, I've read that since last June, a year ago last June, the government's been adding 1,000 employees a day. Uh, do you think that's a good place to save? I think it's an excellent place. Since June the 30th, I think, that is 1950, they've been adding a thousand a day, and I don't believe there is any reason for that, and I don't believe that the Congress should write blank checks 
for the civil or the military. They ought to put the figures in there and let people see them. Governor, let's come back now for just a moment to the specific things that you've done in Maryland. <clears throat> After all, you have a record now. And uh, I believe that you have some opposition from the school teachers because you vetoed uh, higher salaries for school teachers in Maryland. That's right. Well, on what grounds did you veto? Are you opposed to paying school teachers higher salaries? I'm not opposed to paying school teachers higher salary. We don't employ any school teachers on the state level, except in the colleges and the teachers' colleges. The school teachers are employed by Baltimore City and by the counties, and that is where they should receive their pay. You insist that if they get any more money, that it should come from the counties or from the local governments and not the state government. That's right, but the state government does give them a lot of money. In our budget, for example, last year, we had $33 million. Why, a few years ago, that's what the whole state budget was in Maryland, $33 million. But you're not in favor of increasing that in Maryland. I believe that the counties ought to. I don't, uh, I don't believe that the federal government ought to come into Maryland and take over the schools, and I don't believe that the state government should take over the county schools. They ought to operate them themselves. What's your position on federal aid then? I'm opposed to the federal government to getting its foot in the door and dictating to the people of Maryland how we should run our schools. I think it's a tragedy. What about the states that aren't as well off as Maryland, that don't have uh, racehorses? Uh, do you think that Mississippi, for instance, what about the children there? Shouldn't they have some aid from the federal government? I think they should have some aid. We're giving them some aid, but I don't believe that we ought to give people as we are now things that they don't want and things that they're not prepared to accept and are not prepared to understand and absorb. And that's what we're doing in some of these states. Politically speaking, how do the teachers feel about this when you're Oh, they, I'm in bad shape. I'm in bad shape. The teachers are up in arms. That is a lot of them. I don't believe all of them are, though. When I was the mayor of Baltimore, I increased the school teachers three times. I think they ought to get more money but they're coming to the wrong source. They should not come to the state uh, capital. They ought to go to the county seat to get their increases. Do you believe that uh, state revenues generally should be, uh, should be reduced, that the responsibilities of state government should be reduced in Maryland? I, th I agree, yes. I think they should be reduced, and I think the county should assume a greater responsibility. That's the only way you're going to keep down taxes. Uh, people in the county, they don't mind getting uh, money from the state. People in the states don't mind getting money from the federal government. When it's right in the county and they see the money that they have to spend and pay, they're not going to be so anxious for more taxes. Uh, the school teacher lobby, uh, the school teacher group, is a powerful group, isn't it, in the state, and a well-organized one. Very powerful and very well organized. And you think that they'll be opposed to you uh, in future elections in Maryland? I don't believe that all of them will, but I believe some of them. But after I vetoed that bill, I told the counties they should go ahead, and I'm very happy to say that nearly 14 counties have already increased their, uh, their teachers, and Baltimore City is going to give them a three or four hundred dollar increase in next year's budget. Fourteen counties out of how many, Governor? Twenty-three. Uh, do you think uh, other states just haven't been as alert, as, uh, as thorough in, in reducing their budgets? Uh, why is Maryland better off than other states? Well, I guess that, uh, I don't know, I don't know, but I guess pressure groups uh, are the same in every state, in Maryland, in Pennsylvania, in Virginia, all around. Uh, and uh, you I just guess turn your back to pressure groups? Well, uh, if I think they are wrong, I will turn my back to them. I'm a Republican, and uh, we Republicans uh, only get in every 25 years, and uh, we get in there to straighten out what's been wrong before, and then I guess we go out at the end of our first term. <laughs> well, since you're a Republican and so outspoken, Governor, I take it that you expect to have a part in the uh, national campaign in 1952. Yes, uh, I do. You've been active in national Yes. politics before. Whom did you support? I uh, supported Dewey in 40. I supported Dewey when I was chairman of the Republican delegation from Melbourne, Chicago in 44. And I led the Republican delegation for Dewey in Philadelphia in 1948. Well now, uh, I believe that you're on record as being generally opposed to military men becoming president of the United States. Does that mean that you uh, do not look kindly uh, toward the candidacy or the proposed candidacy of General Eisenhower? Yes, I believe that a civilian uh, would do and could do a much better job than a military man, although I think uh, General Eisenhower is a great general and a great man. Who do you? Who do you favor? Well, uh, I like a lot of people. I, I, uh, I like Dewey, of course, but I'm sure that Dewey isn't going to run anymore. I like, I like uh, Dirksen. I think he's a great leader down there in Congress, and I like Stassen. And, uh, 
There are a lot of people that I think Taft uh, uh, is a very competent man. Do you think that economy and government will be one of the principal issues of the campaign next year? I think the economy plus the moral standard for America will be the issue, is my opinion. You are down pretty close to Washington now. Do you think that uh, you speak of moral standards? Do you think the moral standards of the present government have deteriorated? I think they've reached an all-time low in America. Uh, Governor, on that, uh, I'd like to ask you this last question. Uh, how would you limit the expenditures of the federal government uh, so that the budget can be uh, balanced there? Four things I think I would suggest, if I may. Uh, let Congress issue no more blank checks. Let them fill in the figures, whether for the military or the civil. And uh, the federal works, let's take the pork out of the pork barrel. And the third thing, let's get rid of those bureaucrats who are dreaming up ways to spend money. And what Harry Bird said, let's get rid of at least 500,000 of those employees uh, and save $2 billion for this country. That's what I think. Well, in summing up then, Governor, I believe that you definitely uh, have expressed yourself to be a man of action, that you expect to be very active in the campaign in 1952, and that you're generally opposed to General Eisenhower. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. Donald I. Rogers and Mr. William Bradford Huey. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Theodore R. McKeldin, Governor of Maryland. A famous American was fond of the expression, let's look at the record. And in judging a man or a watch, the record brings out the facts. Well, let's look at the Longines record together. The record shows that 38 World's Fairs and International Expositions, Longines watches have won highest honors. The total, 10 grand prizes and 28 gold medal awards. A record unmatched by any other watchmaker. The Longines record in the competitive accuracy trials conducted by the great government observatories is equally brilliant. Longines is the only watch in history ever to win first prizes at the four great government observatories of Washington, Geneva, Hugh Teddington, and Neuchâtel. By its own record, throughout the world, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, made and guaranteed by the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight, inviting you to join us again next week for The Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. Sold and service from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display the emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. This is the CBS Television Network.